aerosol definition aerosol is a pressurized dosage form containing one or more therapeutic active ingredients which upon actuation emit a fine dispersion of liquid and or solid materials in a gaseous medium advantages easily withdrawn of drug easy and convenient to apply faster onset of action no manual or direct contact with the medicament avoid the first pass metabolism a specific amount of a dose or drug can be removed no microorganism can enter release the contents in a controlled and uniformity protect the photosensitive medicaments and oxygen sensitive material provide efficacy of a drug irritation can be reduced disadvantages costly difficult disposal of empty aerosol containers allergic in some cases explosive some formula some formulation is difficult sometimes propellants may cause toxic reactions desired characteristics less explosive uniform and constant dose delivery non allergic economic or low cost easy to handle non breakable eco friendly components of aerosols propellant container valve and actuator product concentrate propellants responsible for developing proper pressure within the container provide driving force to expel the product from the container types of propellants liquefied gases propellants compressed gas propellant types of propellants depending on the route of administration and use type 1 propellant a liquefied gas for oral and inhalation that is fluorinated hydrocarbons example trichloromonofluoromethane which is also known as propellant 11 dichlorodifluoromethane that is also known as propellant 12 topical pharmaceutical aerosols which are hydrocarbons example propane butane type 2 propellant b compressed air gas propellants that are compound gases uh example nitrogen carbon dioxide liquefied gas propellants exist as liquids under pressure because the aerosol is under pressure propellant exists mainly as a liquid but it will also be in the head space as a gas the product is used up as the valve is opened some of the liquid propellant turns to gas and keeps the head space full of gas in this way the pressure in the can remains essentially constant and the spray performance is maintained chlorofluorocarbons propellant of choice for oral and inhalation advantages chemical inertness lack of toxicity non flammability lack of explosiveness disadvantages high cost it depletes the ozone layer example trichloromonofluoromethane which is propellant 11 dichlorodifluoromethane which is propellant 12 trichlorotetrafluoroethane that is propellant 114 hydrocarbons can be used for water based aerosols and topical use advantages inexpensive excellent solvents it does not cause ozone depletion disadvantages inflammable unknown toxicity produced example propane which is propellant a108 isobutane which is propellant a31 butane which is propellant a17 compressed gas propellants compressed gas propellants occupy the head space above the liquid in the can when the aerosol valve is opened the gas pushes the liquid out of the can the amount of gas in the head space remains the same but it has more space and as a result the pressure will drop during the life of the can spray performance is maintained however by careful choice of the aerosol valve and actuator examples carbon dioxide nitrous oxide and nitrogen containers they must be able to withstand pressures as high as 140 to 180 psig that is pounds per square inch gauge at 130 degree fahrenheit aerosol containers are of uh, two types metals or glasses in metals they are subdivided into tin plate tin plated steel aluminum stainless steel in in glass they are of two uh, types uh, uncoated glass plastic coated glass tin plated steel containers it consists of sheet of steel plate 
this sheet is coded with 10 by electrolytic processes. The coded sheet is cut into three pieces, top, bottom and body. The top bottom are attached to body by soldering. When required, it is coated with organic material, usually oleoresin, phenolic, vinyl or epoxy coating. Welding eliminates soldering process, saves considerable manufacturing time and decreases the product container interaction. Recent developments in welding include Soundronic system and Conoweld system. Stainless steel containers used for inhalation aerosols. Advantage extremely strong, resistant to many materials. No need for internal coating. Disadvantage costly. Glass containers. These containers are preferred because of its aesthetic value and absence of incompatibilities. These containers are limited to the products having a lower pressure that is uh, 33 psig and lower percentage of the propellant used for topical and MDI aerosols. Two types of glass aerosol containers, uncoated glass container, less cost and high clarity and contents can be viewed at all times. Plastic coated glass containers, these are protected by plastic coating that prevents the glass from shattering in the event of breakage. Valve easy to open and close capable of delivering the content in the desired form such a spray such a spray foam salt stream etc it can deliver a given amount of medicament types of valves continuous spray valve metering valves this is a valve assembly as you can see at the top there is orifice insert then actuator stem gasket valve cup spring cup spring valve housing dip tube continuous spray valve used for topical aerosols valve assembly consists ferrule or mounting cap valve body or housing stem dip tube gasket spring ferrule or mounting cup used to attach valve to container made from tin plated steel aluminium brass Underside of the valve cup is coated with single or double epoxy or vinyl resins. Valve body or housing made up of nylon or durlin and contains an opening at the point of attachment of tip tube that is 0.013 to 0.080 inch stem. Made from nylon or durlin, brass and stainless steel can also be used. Orifice is of 0.013 to 0.030 inch gasket made from buna n and neoprene rubber spring made from stainless steel used to hold gasket in place tip tube made from polyethylene or polypropylene in a diameter 0 0.120 to 0 0.125 inch however for capillary dip tube in a diameter is 0 0.050 inch and for highly viscous products it is 0 0.195 inch metering valves used for dispensing of potent medication operates on the principle of a chamber whose si uh, size determines the amount of medication dispensed approximately 50 to 150 mg plus minus 10 percent of liquid materials can be dispensed at one time with the use of such valve here's a picture of mdi metering valve actuator these are specially designed buttons which helps in delivering the drug in desired form that is spray wet stream foam or solid stream there are four types of actuators spray actuator foam actuator special actuator or solid stream actuator spray actuator it can be used for topical preparation such as antiseptics local anesthetics and spray on bandages etc it allows the stream of product concentrate and propellant to pass through various openings and dispensed as spray Foam actuator. It consists of large orifice which ranges from 0.070 to 0.125 inch. Solid stream actuator. These actuators are required for dispensing semi-solid products such as ointments. Special actuators. These are used for a specific purpose. It delivers the medicament to the appropriate site of action such as throat, nose, dental and eyes etc. Meter dose inhalator used to minimize the number of administration errors. 
to improve the drug delivery of aeros uh, aerosolized particles into the nasal passageway and respiratory tract. Advantages of MDI it delivers specified amount of dose, portable and compact, quick to use, no contamination of product. Does uh, dose dose repro uh, reproducibility is high. Disadvantages of MDI low lung uh, deposition, high pharyngeal deposition. Coordination of MDI actuation and patient inhalation is needed. Marketed pharmaceutical aerosol products. Here are some examples of uh, MDI. Uh, brand name Flovendiscus, which has fluticasone, is used in asthma. Adwear, which has fluticasone and salmeterol, which is also used in asthma. Aerobit, which has flunosolide, which is used in asthma. Quar, which has Beglomethasone, which is also used in asthma. Proventil, which has albuterol, which is used in bronchospasm. Formulation of aerosol. It consists of two essential components, product concentrate and propellant. Product concentrate, active ingredient or mixture of active ingredients and other necessary agents such as solvents, antioxidants and surfactants. Propellant. Single or blend of various propellants is used. Blend of solvents is used to achieve uh, desired solubility characteristics. Types of aerosol system. Solution system, water-based system, suspension or dispersion system. Foam system which has subtypes, aqueous stable foam, non-aqueous stable foam, quick breaking foam, thermal foam and lastly intranasal aerosols. Solution system. This system is also referred to as two-phase uh, system consists of vapor and liquid phase. If active ingredient is soluble in propellant, no other solvent is required. The vapor pressure of system is reduced by the addition of less volatile solvents such as ethanol, acetone, propylene glycol, glycerin, ethyl acetate. This results in production of larger particles upon spraying. Amount of propellant may vary from 5% for foams to 95% for inhalations. Here is a general formula with its weight percentage. Active drug is about 10 to 15%. Propellant 12 or 11 is in ratio of 50 to 50. 50 to 50, which is to complete 100%. Water based systems. Large amounts of water can be used to replace all or part of the non aqueous solvents used in aerosols. Produce spray or foam. To produce spray, formulation must consist of dispersion of active ingredients and other solvents in the emulsion system in which the propellant is in the external phase. Since Propellant and water are not miscible. A three-phase aerosol foam, propellant, water and wave, vapor phases. Ethanol can be used as co-solvent to solubilize propellant in water. It also reduces surface tension in aiding in the production of the smaller particles. 0.5-2% of surfactant is used to produce a homogeneous dispersion. Surfactants with low water solubility and high solubility in non-polar solvents will be most useful. Example, long-chain fatty acid esters of polyhydric compounds including glycol, glycerol and sorbitol esters of oleic, stearic, palmitic and lauric acids. Propellant concentration varies from about 25 to 60%. Aquasol system has aquasol valve, dispensing fine mist or spray of active ingredient dissolved in water. No chilling effect since only active ingredient and water are dispensed. Propellant is in vapor state. Difference between aquasol system and three phase system is aquasol dispenses fairly dry spray with very small particles. Non flammability of the product. Suspension system. It involves dispersion of active ingredient in the propellant or mixture of propellants to decrease the rate of settling of dispersed particles. Surfactants or suspending agents can be added. Primarily, used for inhalation aerosols. Example, formulation with its weight percentage. Epinephrine by tartrate that is done to 5 uh, microns is 0.50%. Sorbet and uh, trioliate is 0.50%. Propellant 1 and 4 is 49.50%. Propellant, uh, propellant 12 is 49.50%. Epinephrine by tartrate has minimum solubility in propellant system but soluble in fluids in the lungs. Physical stability of 
aerosol dispersion can be increased by control of moisture content that is less than 300 parts per million, reduction of initial particle size to less than 5 micrometer, adjustment of density of propellant and suspensoid so that they are equalized, use of dispersing agents, use of derivatives of active ingredients with minimum solubility in propellant system. Physical stability of a dispersed system depends on rate of agglomeration of the suspensoid. Agglomeration is accelerated at elevated temperatures and it is also affected by particle size of drug that is 1 to 5 micron, never more than 50 micron. Agglomeration results in valve clocking, inaccuracy of dosage and depending on the nature of active ingredients, it may cause damage to the liner and metal container. Isopropyl my, uh, state and mineral oil are used to reduce agglomeration. Surfactants of HLB value less than 10 are used for aerosol dispersion. Example, sorbit and monoleate, monolaurate, trioleate, sesquil oleate. Surfactants are effective in a concentration of 0.01 to 1 percentage. Foam system. Immersion and foam aerosols consist of active ingredients, aqueous or non aqueous, vehicles, surfactant, propellant, and are dispensed as a stable or quick breaking foam depending on the nature of the ingredients and the formulation. Aqueous stable foam. Formulation Active ingredient oil waxes, oil over water surfactant uh, is about 95 to 96.5%. Hydrocarbon propellant, uh, which is 3 to 5 percentage, is in range of 3 to 5, uh, 3.5 to 5 percentage. Total propellant content is usually 3 or 5 percentage weight by weight or 8 to 10 percentage volume by volume as the amount of propellant increases or stiffer and a drier foam is produced. Lower propellant concentrations yield wetter foams. Hydrocarbon and compressed gas propellants are used. Non aqueous stable foam. Formulation with its weight to weight, per, weight by weight percentage. Glycol is 91 to 92.5 percentage. Emulsifying agent is 4 percent. Hydrocarbon propellant is 3.5 to 5 percentage. Glycols such as polyethylene glycols are used. Emulsifying agent is propylene glycol monosterate. Quick breaking foam. Quick breaking foam. Propellant is in the external phase when dispensed, the product is emitted as a foam, which then collapses into a liquid, especially applicable to topical medications. Here is a formulation with its weight, uh, with its weight by weight for percentage, ethyl alcohol, which is 46 to 66 percentage, surfactant, which is 0.5 to 5 percent, water, which is 28 to 42 percent, hydrocarbon propellant, which is 3 to 5, uh, 15 percent. Surfactant should be soluble in both alcohol and water and can be of non-ionic or cationic or anionic type. Thermal foam used to produce warm foam for shaving, used to dispense hair colors and dyes but were unsuccessful due to corrosion problems and are expensive, inconvenient to use and lack of effectiveness. Internasal aerosols intended to deposit medication into nasal passages for local or systemic effect. Advantages Deliver measured dose of drug, require low doses compared to other systemic products, excellent depth of penetration into nasal passageway, decreased mucosal irritability, maintenance of sterility from dose to dose, greater flexibility in the product formulation. Manufacture of pharmaceutical aerosols, compressed filling apparatus, cold filling apparatus, compressed gas filling apparatus. Pressure filling apparatus. It consists of a pressure burette capable of metering small volumes of liquefied gas into the aerosol container under pressure. 
propellant is added through an inlet valve located at the bottom or top of the pressure burette. The propellant is allowed to flow with its own vapor pressure in the container through the aerosol valve. The trapped air escapes out from the upper valve. The propellant stops flowing when the pressure of burette and container becomes equal. If further propellant is to be added, a hose leading to a cylinder of nitrogen is attached to the upper valve. The pressure exerted by nitrogen helps in the flow of propellant into the container. Another pressure filling device makes use of piston arrangement and can maintain positive pressure. This type of device cannot be used for filling inhalation aerosols which have metered valves. The process of pressure filling apparatus involves filling of the concentrate into the container at a room temperature. Then the valve is placed in the container and crimped. Through the opening of the valve, the propellant are added or it can be added under the cap. Since the opening of the valve are smaller in size ranging from 0.018 to 0.030 inches, it limits the production and the process becomes slow. But with the use of rotatory filling machines and newer filling heads where the propellants are filled through the valve stem, the production rate is increased. The trapped air in the container and the air present in the headspace is removed before filling the propellant to protect the products from getting adversely affected. Various units used in pressure filling line are arranged in the following order. Unscrambler, air cleaner, concentrate filler, valve placer, purger, valve crimper, propellant filler, water bath, labor, coder, and packing table. Purger vacuum crimper and pressure filler are replaced with a single unit if filling is carried by under the cap method. Advantages of pressure filling apparatus is that solution emulsion suspensions can be filled by this method as chilling does not occur. Contamination due to moisture is less. High production speed can be achieved. Loss of propellant is less. Disadvantages are that certain types of metering walls can be handled only by a cold filling process or through use of an under the calf filler and valve crimper. The process is slower than cold filling method. Cold filling apparatus. It consists of an insulated box with, with the copper tubings and the tubings are coiled to increase the area exposed to cooling. The insulated box should be filled with dry ice or acetone prior to use. The apparatus can be operated with or without metered valves. Hydrocarbon propellant cannot be filled into aerosol containers using this apparatus because large amount of propellant escapes out and vaporizes. This may lead to formation of an explosive mixture. Fluorocarbon vapors do not form any explosive or flammable mixture though their vapors are heavier than air. This is the diagrammatic view of cold filling apparatus. Procedure Non-aqueous products and products which can withstand low temperature of minus 40 degree Fahrenheit are used in this method. The product concentrate is chilled to a temperature of minus 40 degree Fahrenheit and filled into already chilled container. Then the chilled propellant is added completely in one or two stages depending on the amount. Another method is to chill both the product concentrate and propellant in a separate pressure vessel to minus 40 degree Fahrenheit and then filling them into the container. The valve is placed and crimped onto the container. Then, test for leakage and strength of container is carried out by passing container into a heated water bath where the contents of the container are heated to 130 degree Fahrenheit. After this, the containers are air dried, capped, and labeled. Various units used in cold filling methods are unscrambler, air cleaner, concentrate filler, propellant filler, valve placer, valve crimper, water bath, labor, coder, and packing table. The cold filling method is no longer being used as it has been replaced by pressure filling method. Advantage of cold filling apparatus is that it's an easy process and its disadvantages are that aqueous products, emulsions and those products adversely affected by cold temperature cannot be filled by this method. Compressed gas filling apparatus Compressed gases have high pressure hence a pressure reducing valve is required. The apparatus consists of a delivery gauge. 
a flexible hose pipe which can withstand 150 pounds per square inch gauge pressure is attached to the delivery gauge along with the filling head. A flow indicator is also present in specialized equipment. In the compressed gas filling apparatus, the product concentrate is filled into the container, valve is placed and crimped on the container. With the help of a vacuum pump, the air is removed from the container. Filling head is put in the opening of the valve and the valve is depressed and the gas is allowed to flow into container. The gas stops flowing if the delivery pressure and the pressure within the container becomes equal. Carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide is used if more amount of gas is required. High solubility of gas in the product can be achieved by shaking the container manually or with the help of mechanical shakers. Quality control test includes the testing of propellants, valve actuators and dip tubes, containers, weight checking, leak testing and spray testing. Propellants Vapor pressure and density of propellants are determined and compared with specification sheet. Identification is tested by gas chromatography and IR spectroscopy. Purity and acceptability can be tested by moisture, halogen and non-volatile residue determinations. Walls, actuators and depth tubes. Sampling is done according to the standard procedures as found in military standards. For meter dose aerosol walls, test methods were developed by Aerosol Specifications Committee, Industrial Pharmaceutical Technology Section, Academy of Pharmaceutical Sciences. The objective of this test is to determine magnitude of valve delivery and degree of uniformity between individual walls. Standard test solutions were proposed to rule out variation in valve delivery. Ingredients in percentage weight by weight in test solutions used are isopropyl maristate, dichlorodifluoromethane, dichlorotetrafluoroethane, trichloromonofluoromethane, alcohol USP, specific gravity at 25 degrees Celsius. Test solution A, B and C are given as follows. In testing procedure, we take 25 walls and place them on containers filled with specific test solution. Actuator with 0.020 or inch orifice is attached. Temperature of minus 25 degrees Celsius is maintained. Valve is actuated to fullest extent for 2 seconds and weighed. Again, the valve is actuated for 2 seconds and weighed. Difference between them represents delivery in mark. Repeat this for total 2 individual deliveries from each of 25 test units. Valve delivery per actuation, which is measured in microliter, is given by individual delivery weight, which is measured in milligram divided by specific gravity of test solution. Valve acceptance. The valve delivery of 54 microliter or less has the limits of plus minus 15% and the valve delivery per actuation of 55 to 200 microliter has the limits of plus minus 10%. Of the 50 individual deliveries, if 4 or more are outside the limits, the walls are rejected. If 3 deliveries are outside the limits, another 25 walls are tested. Lot is rejected if more than 1 delivery is outside the specifications. If 2 deliveries from 1 valve are beyond limits, another 25 walls are tested. Lot is rejected if more than one degree is outside the specification. Containers. Containers are examined for defects in lining. Quality control aspects include degree of conductivity of electric current as a measure of exposed metals. Glass containers examined for flaws. Weight checking. It is done by periodically adding to the filling line tiered empty aerosol containers which are filled with concentrate are removed and weighed. Same procedure is used for checking weight of propellants being added. Leak testing. It is a means of checking crimping of the valve and detect the defective containers due to leakage. It is done by measuring the crimp's dimension and comparing. Final testing of valve closure is done by passing the filled containers through water bath. Spray testing. Most pharmaceutical aerosols are 100% spray tested. 
This serves to clear the dip tube of pure propellant and pure concentrate to check the effects in valve and spray patterns. Evaluation test of aerosols. It is of four types, flammability and combustibility, physiochemical characteristics, performance test, and biological testing. Flammability and combustibility is of two types, flashpoint and flame projection. Physiochemical characteristics are of four types, vapor pressure, density, moisture content, and identification of the propellants. Performance. It is of six types, aerosol valve discharge rate, spray pattern, dosage with metered valves, net contents, foam stability, particle size distribution. Biological testing, it is of two types, therapeutic activities and toxicity studies. Flashpoint, it is measured by tag open cup apparatus. In this, product is chilled to minus 25 degree Fahrenheit and test liquid temperature is allowed to increase slowly and the temperature at which vapors ignite is called as flash point. Flame projection. In this, the product is sprayed for 4 seconds into a flame and the flame is extended exact length of how far the aerosol is allowing to move the flame once it has been sprayed on the flame is measured with a ruler. Physiochemical characteristics. Vapor pressure, it is measured by can punction device and pressure gauge. Excess va variation of vapor pressure in the containers indicates the presence of air in the headspace. Density, it is measured by pycnometer and hygrometer. The hygrometer is placed into the glass pressure tube. Sufficient sample is introduced through the valve to cause the hygrometer to rise halfway up the length. Then the density can be read directly. Moisture content, it is measured by Carl Frischer apparatus and gas chromatography. Identification of propellant, gas chromatography and IR spectroscopy. The, the same techniques can also be used to determine the proportion of each component in a blend. Performance test, aerosol valve discharge rate. Contents of aerosol product of known weight W1 is discharged for a specific period of time T. The weight of aerosol W2 after discharge is noted. Then the rate is expressed as below. Aerosol valve discharge rate W1 minus W2 divided by T, which it is measured in gram per second. Spray pattern. The method is based on the impingement of spray on a piece of paper that has been treated with dye talc mixture. The particles that strike the paper cause the dye to go into the solution and be absorbed onto the paper giving a record of spray for comparison purpose. Depending upon the type of container and actuator functioning, we can have different types of sprays. Dosage with metered valves. When one attempts to test this, then either of the following must be observed. Reproducibility of dosage each time the valve is depressed. Amount of medication actually received by the patient. Reproducibility of dosage can be determined by assay techniques, Accurate weighing of filled container followed by dispensing of several doses. Containers are then reweighed and difference in the weight divided by the number of doses dispensed gives average dose. Net contents. To determine the net contents, either of the following methods is used. Initial weight of empty aerosol container is noted. After filling the weight is noted. Difference in the weights is net contents. In destructive method, weighing a full container and then dispensing as much as of the content as possible. The contents are then weighed. This gives the net content. Initial weight of the filled container is noted by opening the valve and total contents are removed. Again, the weight of the content container is noted. Difference in the weight is net contents. Foam stability. The life of a foam ranges from a few seconds for quick breaking foam to one hour or more depending on the formulation. The methods which are used to determine the foam stability includes visual evaluation, time for a given mass to penetrate the foam, time for a given rod that has inserted into the foam to fall, and rotational viscometer. Particle size determination, it has two methods, cascade impactor and light scattering decay. Cascade impactor. In this, a stream of particle projected through a series of nozzles and glass slides at high velocity. Larger particles are impacted first on lower velocity stage, 
and smaller particles are collected at higher velocity state. In light scattering decay, as the aerosols settle under the turbulent conditions, the change in the light intensity of a tindal beam is measured. Biological testing, therapeutic activity for inhalation aerosols. Dosage of the product is determined and is related to the particle size distribution. For topical aerosols, it is determined by applying the therapeutically active ingredients topically to the test areas and the amount of therapeutically active substance is absorbed. Toxicity for inhalation aerosols, exposing test animals to vapors sprayed from aerosol container. For topical aerosols, irritation and chilling effects are determined when aerosols are topically applied, thermistor probe attached to the recording thermometer are used to determine the change in skin temperature for a given period of time. Thank you everyone.